Hi Pyle, this video is going to show you how to create an Nearpod lesson from scratch and some of the activities and things that you can add on to a Nearpod lesson for you to send out to students. So once you log on to your Nearpod account using, again, you want to link it to your Google account, you're going to log on and you're going to see this screen that's right in front of me and you're going to hit create to access and create new lessons. So once you hit create, it sends you to your presentation builder. The first thing you want to do is title your presentation. And this is a sample presentation, so I'm just going to put sample lesson. And then you're going to go to settings, and you want to hit descriptions and tags to it. You're going to have to do this because it, in order for it to publish, they ask you to do this as well. So you have the option of always, when you want to add something to a presentation, you're always going to hit this icon right here that's add slide. Um, from there you have the chance and choice of deciding what you want to add to your slide. In general you want to add a mix between content, web content, and activity because if you're just going to go to add content and add slides you're simply giving a lecture to your students and the whole point of using Nearpod is for it to be interactive. For you to talk a little bit and then have your students discuss and they get some responses from your students. So you want to mix between content, web content, and activity. So I'm just going to first show you how to add a slide. So obviously the first slide would be your objectives. So I'm just going to go ahead and type up objectives. Something to remember is that Nearpod just uses this black background and a white font. They're still working on giving you more options with font and backgrounds. So for the meantime, what you can do is you can upload an image as your background. You can look for a file that you have, you can download color backgrounds from Google Images, or you can look for Google Images that could be in your background. And I'm just going to pretend that this is the lesson that I'm working on about plagiarism. And I'm going to think, I'm going to say I want this as my background and I'm going to hit the add button. So there you go, it becomes your background. And then you save it. So there's your first slide. Again, if you want to now add an activity, you're going to go again to add slime, and you're going to add activity. Nearpod gives you different options of what you can use. The nice thing about all these features and responses that you generate is that it will upload in your live results table. So once students are responding to your poll or to your quiz, all the responses appear in real time on your board. So let's say that for this one, I'm going to have an open-ended question, and I'm just going to ask my students to discuss and brainstorm what is plagiarism, just to see, get a feel of what they know. Maybe I want them to discuss it with a partner. Again, you can also add an image. And you can look for it in Google. Let's just pretend that I'm looking for it's just something in general. I'm going to add it, and I'm going to save it. You also have the ability to access and add website pages. I want to talk to you about that. I only have this feature because I have the gold extension. You can have the gold extension for $10 a month or I have a free trial for six months because I had five teacher friends signed up. Again, you can only access this feature if you have gold extension. Add web content. Let's say that there's a YouTube video about plagiarism. I'm going to quickly look for just a random video about plagiarism that I'm going to just show as a sample. And let's say it's this one. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it here. It's important for you to test the link to see that if it works. And also to know that if it might be able to paste here, but it might not work on the Chromebooks if it's not MCPS approved. So you save it. And there's the video. The website content is uploaded onto a slide as well. I'm now going to show you how you can add a slideshow to your slides. You can either add a pre-existing PowerPoint that you've made or a Google slide presentation that you have to a slide. So you're going to again hit add slide, you're going to go to add content, and you're going to add a slideshow. Nearpod gives you different ways 
to get your slideshow, you can either go to your files, to your computer, to a USB, or you can get onto your Google Drive. So let me show you how I can do that. I already have my Google account linked to my Nearpod. So therefore, it automatically looks for it in my drive. If you don't, it's going to ask you to sign into a Google account. So I'm going to look for a slideshow that I already have made, that we've made in digital literacy. And you select it. And it takes a long time to get all added. So you have to be patient, since it's a slideshow, of, I believe, of eight slides. Something that you want to remember is that when you add a slideshow, you're adding a slideshow onto one slide of your presentation. And I'm going to show you what that looks like later. But what that means is that this slideshow, and it's still taking a while, this slideshow, if you can see, has eight images on this slide. So that means that when I'm sending this out to students, when I'm on slide four, my students have access to go through this whole slideshow within this slide. I can't control the direction and the order that they go into the slideshow. So for example, when I'm on slide one, no one can move on to slide two because these are separate slides. But when you have a slideshow upload into a slide, I can be on slide four, but my students can have access to either image four, three, they can go in the order they want. So that's something that I might want to add to you. And I'm going to show you how that looks like when I show you the student preview and how it looks like as a student. So it does take a while to upload. So what I do is I just hit the back button and then I hit the forward button again as I wait. Okay. So once you're ready to send this out to students, you can hit publish and you hit yes. And that means that it's ready for now for you to send out to your students. So I'm going to show you how it looks like as a student. You want to tell your students to go to near nearpod.com student. And when you're ready, you go you again, when you're ready to send out your lesson, it's going to be in your library. And my sample lesson is right here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to hit the live session. This little eye is to preview it for you to see how it looks like before you send it out to students. So you hit this little icon that's live session. And here's the pin that your students need to type. You can have the ability to send it through email or as a link or in Google Classroom. But in general, this is a big enough font for students to see and then they go ahead. So I'm gonna move back and forth from student to teacher view. So the first thing that it asks is a user, like a name. What you wanna tell your students is that you want them to put their full name. The first time I used this, it was my first time, I didn't know what to expect. My students, I should have I should have known this, but my students put like silly usernames. So I had Batman Lover 102. You want to make sure that they put their full name. And there you go. So the lesson, the Nearpod lesson begins. As a teacher, I can look at this green icon to see how many students are on the session. Once I see that all 32 students are on, I will move on to the next slide. And there you go. What is plagiarism? Define it. So let's say I'm going to, I discuss with a partner, and we type in this. Okay. Send. When students are waiting for you, they have this thank you slide and they cannot do anything. They cannot move on. As you can see, they cannot move on to the next one. They cannot go back because they've already submitted their answer. And as a teacher, I can see that automatically there is Maria's response. And something that I've done when I've done this with my reading class is that I, let's say I like what Maria said. I'm gonna share it out to my students, but I'm not gonna tell my students that it's Maria's. And then we can have a discussion about the responses. That way students also feel validated that you are actually discussing and giving some credit to them without really saying their name, but you can have a discussion. And that, and you, as you notice, no one's name is here. They don't know who said this. And you can unshare. And it tells you when everyone has participated. Obviously, I only have one student in this session, so that's why it says 100%. And I can keep going. So this one's the video. And as you can see, as a student, I can play it. 
on my own. But as a teacher, I haven't played it. So you're going to decide how you want to handle this if you decide to add a YouTube video or any type of video. You can tell your students, we're going to watch a video. I don't want you to click it on your Chromebook. I'm going to play it here. Or you can have students watch it on their own. It's up to you. Again, okay, so this is what I was telling you about. This is the slideshow that's uploaded on one slide of my Nearpod. So this is me as a teacher. I've let my students, I'm on this slide with the slideshow. And as a student, so this is a student, they can go through the slideshow on their own. Notice how I'm the student and I'm on slide eight and my teacher is still on slide one. So if you want to go through this slideshow with your students, you either decide I'm going to delete some and divide it into chunks, or you tell your students, okay, I'm going to be on this slideshow, but you need to be with me. Slide one, slide two, and you tell the students. So that's what I was talking to you about earlier, that when you're uploading a slideshow, this is what appears. The student can move around the slide. You don't have control over it. Slide five, I'm on slide one still. So when you're ready to end the session, there's one thing that you need to remember. For example, in this session, I had an open-ended question. Maybe I had a poll, maybe I had a quiz. I wanna save those responses in order for me to analyze the data for further lessons to see what I still need to work on with my students. So what you do before you end the session is you hit this Nearpod icon and you wanna hit reports. So what that does is that an assessment report of all the presentations, so if you had a quiz, all the results will be saved into a report and emailed to your account. And I'm gonna show you how that looks like. I'm gonna to go to Gmail, to my Gmail account. And when I get into my email, it tells me that my Nearpod ready is ready for me to view, my, near, my Nearpod report. And I can download it as a PDF and I can take a look at it on my free time. And then once you do that, this is a student. Once you do that, oops, sorry, you end the lesson. And it's gonna ask you, you sure because there's still a student on and you just say yes. And that's it. I hope that this is um, very helpful for you to get excited about using it and trying out new things. It's fairly simple. I used it with my reading kids and it was their first time getting on it. They did say that one teacher did use it and they liked it. So I highly recommend you using it. And if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, I'd be happy to meet with you and help you some more.